know, this isn't actually Fed Dead Redemption. That's tomorrow. But, like, we've got such little use out of that, and it's the best thing Shoot's made. That if it was, like, any chance I get to play it, I just play it. And the fact that the branding is now, like, more prominent than ever with the redemption piece of this. Mm. You know, business is back, Bobby. How are you doing today, pal? I'm fired up, man. You know, uh, I don't know if I liked SummerSlam as much as everyone else did, but, uh, you know, we'll kind of work our way through that. But overall, uh, I'm excited. Well, our pal, the Oracle of Wrestling's value, and I don't know what his take on it was necessarily. I've seen a couple of tweets that make me think he's going to be in the same boat as us, which is going to make for a funny show. And I'm very, like, cautious because I don't want to be, like, an arsehole about it because I thought it was a good show, like mm-hmm. a really fun show. But there were definitely some tweets and some takes that made me, like, think I'd watch the wrong program. Yeah. Um, it's been a bit weird, isn't it, Bob? <laughs> A little bit, because it's been very extreme in both sides. Like, you know, people are mad that people are excited about Triple H, and then other people are kind of overcorrecting how excited they are about Triple H and just acting like, you know, everything is fixed now. Um, It's probably somewhere in the middle. The one issue I'm having is, is that, and you and I have agreed on this a lot this year, is like, the way people are reviewing this show, you'd think that their pay-per-views have sucked all year. And it's like, I think their pay views have been pretty much consistently good since like February. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like, everything except the Rumble has been pretty good. Like it's just kind of, it's been fascinating. And honestly, like I'm not even saying any of this is a critique or criticism. The truth of it is, the reality is that this is the biggest strength of getting Triple H in power. Mm-hmm. It isn't the talent. It isn't the booking. The real biggest strength is that it allows them to reset from a perception point of view and everyone gives them a like fair, you know, shot. It's not they're not like led in either direction. What that means is they can do their familiar tropes and no one rolls their eyes because it's a new era. Um, that's just the reality of how this works, it is what it is. But we're seeing that in full effect thus far, Bobby, it feels like, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, folks, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna review the SummerSlam. Um, our pal, the Oracle of Wrestling, will be here shortly. We promise he's booked, he is on the plane now, he's on his way to the venue. And he'll be joining us shortly to review this very show. Um, he, of course, was there. He has still not got back home, Bob. You know this, right? He's just on his way now. Mm. Um, very stressful weekend, I'm told, on the booking front. But you get what you get, I suppose. I don't think Oracle quite knew what he was in for when he said, yes, old agent Liv and Ronda on last week's preview show. <laughs> um, but, you know, we'll talk about that tonight. So the Oracle Wrestling will be here. We won't do kind of a formal review until he's here. Uh, but I think it's worth kind of, just talking broadly as we have here at the start. Um, it seems like we're on the same page. This was a good show, a fun show. People may be a bit carried away. Was it surprising to you in any way? Or is it more a case of, um, you know, the one big angle that, that's going to probably be relevant on Raw tonight in terms of the women kind of being the main centerpiece in that regard? Yeah, it's part of that. And part of, like, I think the stuff that we were high on and that we thought was going to be good was good. And then the other stuff was either... You know, you had a couple of rematches and the two tag matches where they had better matches in the past month yeah. uh, on both fronts. And, uh, you know, some of the other stuff uh, was just too short to really get a good read on it. But, yeah, I, I think the start and the ending were very good. I would agree. Certainly book ended by quality. I guess what I would say is, do we think... Um, would you agree with my assertion that it was only one thing on the show that I would personally deem a miss? Now, I don't know if you would agree with what I'm going to say, but how many things on the show would you say you thought were bad or unfortunate? Um, Yeah, probably only one thing. I think it's the same thing. Yeah. The one that I was very unsure about a week ago. and Yeah. I'd love to know what that match was supposed to be. If like, like the rumor is that Keller's reporting that it was a Triple H quarter term Ronda Hill. Which mm-hmm. I'm not like convinced is the truth, but I'll just you know I accept it for the sake of this conversation. Like, what was that match supposed to be? If she's not turning heel, yeah, that's really the thing. Because I actually I don't even mind the finish. I think it's a good finish. I just you know, it's fine, but it's like the problem with the finish is is here's the problem. It's to us to waste now, and then you know we will get this out of the way for her. We need to talk about as much or as little as he wants, right? So the finish in a vacuum is fine. Mm-hmm. The problem, obviously, is the person who's turning heel is in the right because she clearly won the match. Yeah. One way to undercut that is if Liv like, had a really good shine in the rest of the match. Unfortunately, she just kicked the shit out of her and like, won. Yeah. And I don't really know. 
Like they appeared to have thought the crowd was going to boo when she beat up Liv after, and they absolutely didn't and cheered because they were like, yeah, she mm-hmm. kicked the shit out of her. She's right. So I don't really understand that, Bob. Is what I'm, I, I don't yeah, know. and listen, if that's the plan, you know, she's going to kick the shit out of Liv for like 12 minutes instead, and then they do that finish, I think it's a little better just because, you know, Liv got her, you know. But yeah. after, you know, four minutes or whatever, it doesn't really have the same effect. No, it was like a, it was framed like a squash match, dude. Mm-hmm. It was, I don't know. I really feel for poor Liv because I that division is really not the best group to have your first title reign around. You know, like no, it's... but she's probably gonna get Shayna next, and then you know the draft is coming, so could help a little bit. That Shayna match has not got too much. Uh, how do I put this? Uh, I don't know if anyone will care. Unfortunately, yeah. you know. Well, I think Shane is great, but has Shane won a wrestling match in a while on TV? When was the, I haven't watched SmackDown. She might have. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, I don't know. It's a weird deal. Um, it was a strange presentation. I didn't think it was very generous to to young Liv, but you get what you get, I suppose. But we agree that was the one miss, correct? Yeah. Okay, while we wait for the Oracle Wrestling, what was your favorite match on the show, Bobby? Um... I think it ended up being the last man standing match. Yeah, I think so. Um, did you get the sense after about four minutes that Brock was absolutely exhausted, which made the match infinitely better? Because I 100% did feel that way. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't uh, gimmicking the counts at all. It was a shoot 10, and Brock was uh, struggling a little bit. <laughs> there was a moment where, like, firstly, and again, we'll circle back when the Oracle of Wrestling's here, but, you know, we, because we don't want to go into Raw, it's best we do this now, we just kind of pop ourselves here. But the start of the match where Brock like was going to jump off the tractor thing, mm-hmm. like I assumed he was going to do like a sort of cane leaping clothesline, and he did a fucking shoot Fez press yeah. where he like nearly killed Roman, mm-hmm. and he was like chasing after Roman and popping huge, like grinning wide and just having a great time, and then they brought it in the crowd, and when he came back and he tried to do the spot where he like leapt up to the barricade and mm-hmm. fell, I looked at Brock's like face. It, it honestly looked like he was regretting everything he'd done at that point. Like, he was like, why am I... Like, he looked surprised at how tired he was. Do you think it was maybe a case of, like, as much as Brock is a freak, he's also now... How old is Brock? 43? Yeah, 44? 45 or whatever, yeah. <laughs> Do you think it, it honestly looked to me at one point in the match that he was like, oh, shit, this is, like, kind of... This is a little much, man. It's like a 20-minute match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's always red, but, mm. you know, you get what you get, I suppose. Um... The tractor, I cannot wait. Let's have guesses now. I don't know if you talked to him. What did Oracle think of the tractor, do you reckon? Yeah, I have no idea. I didn't want to ask him about it because I wanted to save some stuff for uh, today, but he probably enjoyed it. I think, yeah, I think so. But, like, there's definitely a chance, like 100% there's a chance that he, he thought it was absolute horseshit, right? Like, he got yeah. mad about it. It'll be interesting. I don't know. I personally had a really good time with it. Uh, it was obviously their best match since, um, you know, Mania 31, right? Right? Um, Crown Jewel match last year was good, but yeah, I think uh, this was good. Right. I, didn't, I didn't see that one. That's my bad. So you got that, you know, but for the most part, it's been more misses than hits for those guys. Mm-hmm. So it was good for them to close their feud out in a way that people seem to like. One other thing I want to talk about, this kind of broad stroke stuff. Um, huge pop. For the most obvious thing ever happening immediately, Michael Cole turning in the best pay-per-view performance of his career. Um, there are some things that are cliches and tropes, and people like me with a microphone repeat too much. And there are some things that are that way because they're true. The running bit that Michael Cole is a very good announcer when not armed with triple with uh, Vince McMahon in his ear <laughs> is like incredible performance on him immediately cashing in on it. He was tremendous on this show, Bobby. Yeah, he was great. Um, he uh, and he is very good. Like that's the thing. the The bit about Vince was funny because it was true the entire time. It was, and there was that line where Corey, you know, see what did Corey say? I, I miss when you wasn't allowed to have an opinion. <laughs> and Cole said, "That's changed. A lot of things have changed. Mm. Fucking cooked him, bro. <laughs> Michael Cole, a real last man standing. Um, Paul Heyman, his cell was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. He was like frozen in place." Our expert analyst has joined us, folks. Live from outside Nissan Stadium. Looks Not a little bit quite. different, though. The <laughs> Oracle of Wrestling. You right, mate? I'm good. Good. Fired up? Sure. 
<laughs> so we were just talking. I want to get a read on you quickly here. We're both a little bit bemused at like some of the conversation around this show because we thought it was a good show and a fun show. But it's a little, it's been a little bit weird to see some of the reactions that it's like the best show in, of the year and stuff. It's been a little odd. You honestly, were there. The thing that's uh, honestly the thing that's offended me the most is that people are like, "This was just as good. Uh, the the main event was just as good as Mania 31." I was like, "Stop." There you go. Do you agree it's their best match since then, which is what I just said, or not? It's their most enjoyable match since then. I'm not so sure right. it's the best. Uh, I don't want to make actually think, I actually think the I actually think the Saudi Arabia match last year was better. Well, um, you did just mention that. There you go. But in terms of enjoyment and entertainment, this was definitely better. Yes. Okay. I don't want to make people wait, Oracle. What was your reaction to the track? Did you think it was horse shit or did you think it was incredible? Uh, we all saw it in the crowd like before and people were like, oh my God, Brock's going to come out in the tractor. And we were kind of waiting for it. When he didn't at first, we were like, oh, why, why is he not going out? And then he got into it and drove down to the ring. And and um, like when he, when he first dumped Roman with it, it was like, that's lame. And I was like, was Roman, lame, yeah. I was like, Roman needs to get up at like five. And he did because I was like, that didn't even look painful at all. Yeah. And then when he did the, when when they when he got the thing and pushed the ring like, eight feet the first time he slid it even before he picked it. i was like holy shit and right. he kept doing it and dustin and, and, and my brother dustin are like what's going on and then like when he lifted it up everybody just like stood out of their seats because it like it instantly reminded me of vengeance 2011 when big show and, Hen and henry broke the ring and cena and del rio had to work the last man standing mm -hmm. match without a ring you know with a broken ring it was honestly crazy though right like yeah it was nuts well first of all like i'm sure it was gimmicked in a, in a way for safety but like it, it still looked like, I still mean, nuts, yeah. like when they were over there doing belly to belly overheads between that, between the ring and, and when mm -hmm. it's just like this and the announce table, I was like, man, the Usos better not like they're the Brock's got to be careful about where he's throwing them. By the way, he fucking killed them on those belly to belly suplexes. Oh, yeah. And when it was time for payback on the super kick, Jimmy hit him so hard they couldn't even do a double two. He just kicked Brock straight in the head. It was unbelievably <laughs> funny. Yeah, um, it was honestly like when Cole reacted to it with he's like, I've never seen anything like this. I, I genuinely, my reaction was, yeah, I haven't either. This is one of the most insane things I've ever seen. I couldn't believe well, the visual was amazing. Truly amazing visual. Um, so there's that. All right, folks, let's get into it. Let's go in a more kind of rigid format here as we review the SummerSlam. Um, clearly, we're all on the same page. We all we all liked the show. We had fun with the show. I do think we're all a little bit bemused at the kind of uh, sweeping <laughs> adulation. But we've liked most of WWE's pay per views this year. I think this one is in the same boat, and it had a nice sense of optimism to it. So let's get into it. Oracle, probably your most anticipated matchup, kicked us off. Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch. Um, I was really good. I didn't think it was as good as their WrestleMania match. Mm -hmm. I will say, I thought it was evident, and this may be a case of miking. Please tell me if so, Oracle. Watching at home, I didn't get the sense there was electric heat for this until they really earned it late. And I think that's the result of the build was really kind of, mm. let's just do another match for the sake of doing another match. Now, I will say, I love the post-match. I love the term. We'll get into that in a minute. But the match itself, liked it a lot. Not quite the Mania match. What did you think, Oracle? Um a couple of reasons. One, I think, is like kind of a small thing that doesn't get talked about. My brother mentioned this, um, Dustin, who was with me. He was like, you know, with these outdoor shows, they don't open pyro, open with pyro because the sun's out. And he said, mm -hmm. I think that hurt the crowd reaction early in the show. Yeah. Because the crowd really didn't, really didn't. Tr I mean, obviously, they picked up in the finish and the post match, but the, the interests and stuff, they just, there wasn't right. any sort of initial boom. Um, but I, I, I think you're right. Uh, it, it wasn't until the um, manhandle slam kick out, which I yes. bit on, because when you're in the building, you know, you bite on those near falls a little bit more. Um, you know, the manhandle slam kick out uh, is when the people were kind of got up. And yeah, um, this one, you know, they worked a much more technical match. Um, obviously, Becky toughed it out like no other when her shoulder was literally popping out of her body, you know, while she's working half the match for the busted up shoulder was that with the was that with the um i wasn't sure was she, get, was she got thrown under the, yeah, the I'm um, sure. uh chicken wing into the it may would have been yeah i think it was you know, i think people were saying that i i couldn't tell even from the yeah. big screen i couldn't tell exactly how how bad that looked but from what i understand that was a pretty i mean i saw the photo of her shoulder literally mangled yeah. she's working tough, that, but super tough yeah yeah, um, this was a really much more technical match, you know, a lot yeah. more in limb work. Bianca's selling throughout was excellent. I thought Bianca's yeah. 
Becky wasn't selling. She was hurt, but um, <laughs> like, but you know, Bianca's selling was excellent. I really liked how she didn't to- totally oversell it. I've gotten to the point where I appreciate like, and don't get me wrong, wrong. Like I love the Christians and stuff of the world who like really sell their limb and Ray, but like, I also really appreciate the subtle selling of yeah. like, do you still do your offense? But you know, Bianca kept, kept selling it throughout the match, which I think is a really, really good way to sell. Um, yeah, this was, this was really good. Um, they, they did some nice callbacks and, and stuff. There was times where I thought they tried to be too cute and elaborate. Yeah. Um, and you know, that happened early and, and later specifically more later that might've had to do with Becky's shoulder. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it didn't detract too much from the match, but I definitely thought it was lesser than the mania match. Um, the finish was outstanding. What a tremendous yeah. finish. Yeah. Um, it really reminded me of, that was another great callback to mania where she tried to hit it and beyond course moonsaulted out of that. And this one, she, she, she hit the Spanish fly and, and I knew what was happening right when it happened. It still was awesome, you know, to mm-hmm. see it. And, um, you know, there was, there was a pretty good pop for Bianca's win and, and, uh, you know, the celebration was nice. And of course, you know, we'll, we'll jump into that once, once, you know, the craziness of that, once we get everybody's thoughts on here, but, um, to your point about the selling, it's also like a nice adjustment to how because it was it was a thing in the match where Becky didn't work it in a way that required like life or death selling, right? Like right. it was just a theme in the match. I right? think you, you were spot on there. Um, by the way, the KOD looked especially in fat kid, didn't it? She really had to like because mm-hmm. I think Becky was struggling physically. Um, it was really saying, Bobby, what do you think of the the whole opener at SummerSlam, bro? Yeah, I thought it was great. Um, it took a couple minutes to get going, and I don't think it was as good as the Mania match. But for what it was, it was very good. Um, you know, that, that last few minutes was very good. Becky busted out of Diamond Dust, which was incredible. Um, you know, it just – it was it was a really good match. And, you know, these two, I think, you know, kind of looking at their series of matches, obviously SummerSlam last year wasn't great, but everything since then, you know, the triple threats uh, at Crown Jewel and then Hell in a Cell just – all hits, man. It's a rivalry that we'll remember fondly, ultimately, and that's an incredible triumph considering where we were at a year ago. So yeah. I think both women deserve a lot of credit. Um, and in absolute fairness, I think it's only right to do this. There are a lot of people that you know trusted the process on this thing, and I thought, frankly, they were fucking insane to do so, but they were, in the end, vindicated, right? Like, they, you know, they yeah. got there in the end. And, beyond, and look, that doesn't mean they had to do what they did at SummerSlam. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is... I remember thinking people were very, you know, wildly confident they were going to pay this off and come back. And they did. So credit on that front. Um, Becky's been fabulous in ring since she came back. Yeah. Really deserves a lot of credit on that front. And Bianca, what is there left to say about her? Obviously, she's, you know, she's the ace of the territory, brother. So they do the Becky Lynch babyface turn quite organically, you know, a handshake and kind of the show respect deal that that we've come to kind of honestly is like, an underutilized but very familiar babyface turn for a top star where you just kind of realize the crowd, you know, like the crowd, the crowd fights for them, just let them embrace it, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got that, and it's like that was something. And then Bianca was on the uh, in the corner and they played Bailey's music, which obviously got a huge reaction, but I don't think anyone needs to, you know, even pretend they expected what was gonna happen next because what happened next <laughs> caught me way off guard. I was not aware of Dakota's theme, firstly, um, which popped me. And then we got Io Shirai, who is now Io Sky, different spelling too, which is going to kill some Twitter bits. But nonetheless, a faction that was pitched a few months back and was was turned down by all accounts is now in motion. Dakota Kai back in the promotion. Io, Io Shirai, Io Sky, it's going to take a while. Resigned, I'm assuming. Hello, Leo Sky. There you go. Um <laughs> That now makes Alex. less that makes less sense than ever now. <laughs> um, so, you know, immediate moves on Triple H's part. Anyone that was paying attention to the story, this is like the least surprising thing ever. Like, of course, he brought back Dakota Kai and re-signed Io Shirai. Some people were in delusion about this stuff. This was the inevitable results of this move. It's a good thing. It felt exciting. And then when we got that moment where Becky got back in there and then went face to face, bro, that was a really fucking cool moment. Um, Oracle, your reaction to this whole angle and in my view, anyway, like the main headline coming out of the show was what they set up here. This could be big time stuff. Yeah, man. Um, so, you know, Bianca celebration was going on, and like I didn't even think of anything like, yeah, like 
I mean, we, you know, a lot of us all thought Bailey might show up, but like, I didn't even think about the con, you know, the, like, like the, mm-hmm. you know, how that would happen. And like, all of a sudden, like, I just kind of, I was like looking down at my phone or looking down or something. And like, the, yeah. the Bailey on the screen caught my eye and the music started. And I said, oh shit, it's Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> and like the whole, like she had the biggest pop of the night, like yeah. in terms of like entrances or whatever. Um huge pop and she came out of course i thought it would just be her you know mm-hmm. and then when dakota came out that totally caught me out and i was like holy yeah. shit i was like what's going on here and i was like well there's obviously going to be a third and then when eo came out i was i was actually you know a little bit surprised with that like at least in terms of just because you know i i wasn't really thinking of you know where these surprises will be placed on the card absolutely um of course, I popped huge for the Becky coming in and, and facing that off with great. them. And that was great. Um, that was a great moment. That was just that was really awesome. That was it was a highlight of the whole show, honestly. I mean, I so. the show really peaked here. Um, you mm-hmm. know, and that's not even to say that the rest of the show was bad. There was, we'll talk about it here, but there were some bizarre instances that occurred on this show that I think had more to do with closing one chapter and opening another. Yeah. But I was bummed that I was that it's. Summer Sam's playing second fiddle this year, I think, to a degree for, for multiple so. reasons, not just one reason, but yeah. there are multiple reasons why. And that that bummed me out a little bit, but um, but yeah, this was this was incredible. Like the crowd reaction was great, and I mean, this raw women's division, y'all, is just I mean, this is ridiculous. it's the best I've ever had, right? Yeah, it's the best. Div- it's like it's the best division, and you know, I mean. So this might this answer because there may be two added tonight, right? It sure oh, seems no, like people like, are hinting, but let's just kind of talk about it now as it is without Sasha and Naomi. Mm-hmm. So the heel side is Bailey, Rhea, EO, Dakota. Is that is that the four? Am I missing a heel there? Because Becky's turn now. Yeah, they've got it. Yeah, the baby faces are Bianca, Becky, Asuka, Alexa. Mm-hmm. That's your eight. Mm-hmm. Like. Any of those women can be involved in major programs and hold their own as star attractions, you know? Like, that's a really cool moment in time. Now, obviously, it does come with a slight disclaimer that SmackDown is kind of struggling in its own, I mean, in its own line there. But, yeah, you they know, really need it. Honestly, if I'm them, I put Sasha and Naomi back on SmackDown. They kind of have to, bro, right? Yeah, they yeah. got it. I mean, I mean, they have to. Even if you shoot an angle tonight with them on Raw, long term, it has to be SmackDown. It has to be. And, and like, yeah. this is, look, to be clear, Mela, Nikki, Dewdrop, Zelina, um, all of these, they're good talents. I wasn't dismissing them. I was just saying, that's your, like, top pack. That's crazy. Um, what were your thoughts on the big post-match angle that kind of stole the show at SummerSlam? Yeah, it was awesome. I uh, wasn't expecting it. I mean, you know, kind of thought we'd get Bailey, but, yeah, those other two just out of nowhere. And yeah. uh, really excited to see where they go with it, honestly. Like, it's, it's a big spot for all three of them, and I think they're going to crush it. So this actually kind of kicked that around a little bit because we're going to do Fed Dead tomorrow, folks, and we're going to do some big picture stuff. But I feel like this conversation is right for now because Raw is an hour ahead or an hour away when we're doing this on Twitch. So this is a really interesting place they're in here because, like, it feels like you set up Bailey and Bianca, but you have to be very careful with that. Mm. Because I don't think you want to do that match and just beat Bailey. Yeah. And I think the previous regime would have booked that match um, and then figured out a way out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure Triple H is going to be rushing to put himself in that corner. If you remember where he would book back in the olden days of Black and Gold NXT, I think this is the kind of thing you may avoid for a little bit. So I say all this, Bob, to say, do you think there's a chance we may wait a little bit on Bailey Bianca and kind of let some other pieces, some other things develop elsewhere? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely do. I think, you know, they could still do a six-woman tag match, like, even at Clash of the Castle. Like, yeah. Bianca doesn't necessarily have to defend the title. You do, uh, you know, Bailey and Io and uh, Dakota against Bianca and Sasha and Naomi or, you know, pick two other baby faces. They have plenty to pick from, like we talked about. So, like, that's a big enough match where you can just run that on a pay-per-view and it'll be, you know, good stuff. And then, you know, you get into... I think after that you have extreme rules, which you don't necessarily need to do Bailey and Bianca there either. You could though, and you know there's kind of more right? room for mm. more room for uh, you know shenanigans or whatever. It's really interesting to me. I, I just I wouldn't I don't want them to kind of 
rush themselves into a bad situation here. It is worth noting, though, you have Rhea, who's kind of like looming over this because she's owed a title match. Now, there's a good chance they just never really, uh, you know, think of this or care about it. Yeah. But like, I, mean, I, I think we all agree there's still a lot of money in Rhea and Bianca. It's a huge match. That hasn't changed, yeah. It's just like, I'm maybe I'm overthinking it. I just could see a world where, where the Triple H regime is not trying to rush into that match. Eric, what are you mm-hmm. in? Sorry to interrupt. I've got I've got I've got something on my mind. Oh. So I'm thinking three matches. <clears throat> well, just off the top of my head, they 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 that they, they, they could do a clash of the castle. Yes. I don't think it's out of the realm the Triple H would do this, even this early. I think there could be four women's matches on that show. That rules. Sasha and Naomi versus Dakota and Iona tag. Strong. Um, Bianca and Rhea for the title. Hmm. And if Becky's healthy, Bailey Becky and Bailey. Yeah. I think that may have been the plan. Mm-hmm. Hopefully yeah. Becky's, you know, dislocated shoulder. It's usually like a month or so. Yeah. But I don't know. She she might not be ready to go. I really um, think that may have been the plan, bro. I really – I just yeah. – I feel like he's going to want to let that Bailey title match sit for a little bit, you know? It's got to. They Honestly, I think he's going to treat – I think he's going to treat Survivor Series differently, or maybe they will. I don't think they're going to do Brand Supremacy anymore. What if they do fucking war games? Yeah. That's, that's what, what I want to see. Like – you know, like, the blueprint for this faction should be the shield, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know how the TV on WWE, Oracle knows this better than anyone. I'm saying this like he doesn't wear, he's not aware of what I'm about to say. Mm-hmm. But, like, the TV in WWE for about two years was just built around the shield doing trios matches. And I think there's real evidence mm-hmm. that's what you should do with this act with Bailey and Dakota. Yeah. Like, they can have incredible matches. And you have, with your baby faces... Like, you can rotate, especially if you get Sasha and Naomi back. You could just put different people in. Bro, it could be a blast, man. Eventually, someone turns and joins that group, and then you do war games or some shit. It'd be interesting, man. I don't know. Um, very intrigued by all of this. We won't get too much more into it because this is a SummerSlam review, but I thought it had to be talked about because everyone's immediate talking point was, what do you do now? The division is just stacked. I also, as I mentioned in the chat, absolutely great. it definitely feels like Beth's going to be back to work rear in some form or fashion. That's so, true. Yeah. yeah. And... Yeah. and, and, and- uh, don't have an app made a good point that we, we do have Crown Jewel, which will be a big show before Survivor Series. So, Pop. you know, obviously that's uh, – people will understandably choose to watch that show or not. But um, yeah, that'll be that's, that's, that's going to be it. Although I think the whale show is the biggest show of the year left because it doesn't look like they're going to have a December show. I think Survivor Series is going to be the end of the 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 end of the, uh, premium live, again, yeah, uh, live they're, calendar they're, again because they're doing day one again. Yeah. So – Is there like – the draft's two months away, but you, would you be tempted to do a trade anyway just because, like, the SmackDown division is in such an alarming state? Because I would be tempted. I can't lie. Yeah. Like, whichever of Asuka or Alexa is totally out of this thing, you move them, I think. Mm-hmm. And Zelina should come back on the other show too because Zelina's, like, honestly, useful. I honestly think they should move Alexa over there. There's one problem with that, isn't there? Ronda and Alexa. I don't know if Ronda and Alexa is a thing you want to re really kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably, you probably have to put Asuka over there. Oscar thrives so well when she. I mean, saying that though, Alexa, this is difficult. Alexa makes more sense for Liv, but Asuka makes more sense for Ronda, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of difficult. I don't know. I'm not sure the best answer there. It will be fine. They have a draft coming up. I just it's think rap. hopefully they should they should, they should yeah. literally just move like I don't know eight people over. Yeah, each, fuck it. like they did in 2005. Yeah, this is true. It's, I say a trade, like they wouldn't just have Alexa do a save angle with Liv and be like, here she is. No, I don't know. Yeah. Not sure it's fine. Stand um, up. There you go. Up. I was upset for you didn't hear that on Sunday, yeah, Saturday, whenever it was. It feels like years ago now. Um, up next, this over-delivered, brothers. I was way off. My read on the celebrity matches was in, like, the complete wrong galaxy. <laughs> Logan Paul versus The Miz is a 7.22 on cage match. Um... Logan Paul looks incredible in this match. He went 14 minutes. Yeah. He appeared to have offense for most of this match. 
There was an AJ Styles involvement uh, where he ran off Champa. The only thing he did that looked like shit was the phenomenal forearm, which is one of those moves that should just be avoided at all costs because AJ does that in like a way that's, you know. He does like, it in his like yeah, Matrix right. AJ way, you know. You can't recreate that at six foot four, bro. Like, just leave it. No. Um, but he looked incredible. You know, and credit to me is that dude, he usually comes through when they need him most as a pro, right? So this was a home run, I thought, to be honest with you. Bobby, what did you think of Logan Paul versus The Miz? Yeah, ruled. You know, we kind of talked about, oh, you know, WrestleMania, he looked good in the ring, but he looked he looked awesome here, man. Like, he's clearly been working at it and, uh, you know, did the elbow drop through the table, which I wasn't expecting. Um, just, yeah, it was good stuff. Like, I mean, obviously I don't like him. He's not for me, but if he's going to show up and do that every, you know, three months or whatever, sure. Well, he's going to eventually wrestle for the belt, right? It's definitely a thing they're going to do at some point, right? Like, is his second match he did a frog splash for the announce table? Like he's definitely going to wrestle Roman Dude, Reigns. Dude, next ball. year. No, forget that. Cody and Logan Paul. Oh, my God. Imagine, Great American, Great American Bash. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like the little, <laughs> little extra element I had to throw in there? Just pop myself. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. I don't know. Eric, what did you think of this match? I'm sure it popped you that Miz had a, a banger at SummerSlam, brother. It was good, man. Like, it was good. Like, the first half of it was just kind of like, okay, whatever. And then it really picked up. The stuff with Champa refusing to leave the ring was incredible. Yes. And then, like, AJ chased him. And so, when he, when he, like, I don't know if it was caught on camera or not, but AJ chased him. And so, he got him from the 50-yard line and chased him all the way through the tunnel. Like, full sprint. <laughs> like, all the way through. It was tremendous. Maximize your minutes, brother. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was great. Um Everybody's theme music hitting in the middle of the matches. People yeah. were getting livid about that on the TL, and I don't blame them. Like in the building, it's kind of fun, but like if I was watching at home, I'd have been like, "What is this stupid shit?" Or like, you know, yeah. people's music keeps hitting. It's just like okay, it's 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 getting ridiculous. Um, but like, yeah, this was this was super fun. I mean, uh, the big the big jump. Uh, frog splash at the table was insane. Um, okay. that that I that must have been on Sports Center or something because people were texting me about that. Like, what do you think of Logan Paul as a wrestler? <laughs> um, so uh, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a blast, it was a really good match. Um, I I mean, it was it was it was really really good in some ways. It was like it was really one of the three like really good matches of the show, like. Yep. The other matches were really not that good. Yeah, it was definitely um, yeah, third, right? Has to be third. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. was this was this was yeah. I think you could argue. It was, I mean, it's tough to kind of put it above the other two big, you know, two big main events that right. you know bookended the show. But I mean, this this impressed me for sure. I mean, yeah, it it, it absolutely over delivered. And credit to Miz for catching Logan Paul on dives. You know, that's the first and you know the first in you know Miz's career to do something like that. <laughs> When it comes to it, brother, you know. Yeah. No matter when it's fucking, you know, Evan Bourne flying past. No, you know, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, or Kofi or whatever. Who cares? Yeah, Logan Paul. When you, know, when you, got, when you got that, you got that celeb, brother. You better catch him. Here's where it is. Um, shout out to Ben, good brother Ben Dixon, has gifted a sub to Papa House, who is now a subscriber via Ben's gift. There you go. There's a pop for us. There you go. Shout out, Ben. Shout out, Papa House. Papa House. Okay. Thanks, old man. Bob Lash. His entrance did not necessarily translate on TV for me to the stadium where they just sort of put like a like a they just like put like a like a stool there. Yeah. <laughs> and like the lighting wasn't right and it was kind of weird. But he's really over. I don't know if you've heard, I mentioned this on a few shows. And he beat Austin Fury in four minutes, <laughs> which fucking rules. The finish was so sudden and like so just emphatic. I don't want to get carried away with this Fury thing, but it sure feels like he like they may actually be really slowing down with the Fury. Like this was kind of crazy how easily beat him. Um well, we did this kid should have gone away with me because they went they legitimately went four minutes. Yeah, I thought it'd be a little longer, and then Lashley just kind of kicked his ass for the entire time, and I was fine with it, you know. Um it's it's become a really good bit where whenever theories around Lashley or Brock or Rowan, they just kick the shit out of him. Yeah. Um I enjoy that, but yeah, listen, I, I think Lashley uh, having the U S title with people in charge who actually care about mid card titles is going to be a good thing. 
I agree. I like him as like the de facto male champion on Raw. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a good deal. Oracle, did this pop you in the same way it popped us? Yeah, like uh, their their match last month was a little bit better because it had a little bit more meat to it. But yeah, yeah this is just whatever. Like there, he got squashed. It ruled. So interesting, this theory thing. There were people who were like big theory fans in the crowd. By the way, it was very disappointing. Well, some terms I have for those folks, but I'll leave that for another show. Yeah. No disqualification tag match. First miss of the night. Not a big miss. Nothing big, but nothing crazy. But this was bizarre. The Mysterios against Judgment Day. Um, <laughs> this was not an ODQ tag. This was yeah. a tag plus a plus chair. Plus Ray using a, sta- or a, a, a chair. Yeah, for like 30 seconds. And then <laughs> obviously the finish. So like the rest of the match was just a tag match. And they've had actively better tag matches on there TV no in the last DQ, month. So Adam Edge could come out. I get it, but like... I, for some reason, thought they were going to be like a, like a tornado kind of deal, you know? Yeah. Like kind of a, yeah. They should have. Um, yeah. It was also strange that Ray, like, he fucked up his finish. Did you see that? That was weird, mm. man. Yeah. He was like he wanted to spring, but missed the – it was bizarre. You never see Ray do I think, that. I think he just changed his – I think he changed his mind mid-jump, and he just yeah. had to just go with it. The other problem was that, like, it's been established that Rhea can kick the shit out of both Mysterios, and she just stood and watched them wrestle the whole time for the most part, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate. I don't know, man. This was not like terrible. It was just sort of bizarre. Like it was just a weird deal. Obviously, you popped huge for Edge coming back. I'm sure, Oracle. So, <laughs> what do you think of the match? What do you think of having old Adam Edge back in the picture? Well, the match was tough to pay attention to because look, it's Edge. It's Edge. <laughs> Everybody pointing at him in the tunnel. You know, oh, it's Edge at the no. end. <laughs> he sat there the whole match. He stood there the whole match, and you know, out there. Yeah. And you know, it's Edge. It's Edge. Yeah, he came out with his like. <laughs> he came out and, like the look on my brother's face because he doesn't watch a weekly anymore. He just like the hell is this? And he was like <laughs> rude gimmick, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> his face, bro. When the flames like went down, he had that like classic edge facial. <laughs> yeah, was like, like his, you know because he got the glasses and his yeah. eyes were like he looks like he he literally looked like a um he literally looked like a character from like. Uh, Dragon Ball Z or something. It was ridiculous, bro. <laughs> and it has to be said, like, Judgment Day is so interesting because they all individually, they seem like three cool people and they're like the least cool act in all of wrestling. Like, that act oh, wow. is like, holy shit, dude. They're losers, <laughs> man. <laughs> they're like, they're like, they're like, you know, they're like, villains in like a high school movie from the 80s they remind you know in like 97 fed when like everyone's in a faction and they have all these yeah. like weird sort of off- they, they remind <laughs> like one of those like, <laughs> they're like los periquas yeah they're like, it's like, or like or like doa the talent involved like if i just said to you you've never oh, seen fuck that, fuck that. They're, they're like uh uh who's don <laughs> Callis's group the oddies no truth commission um, Truth yes, commission. Truth Commission, yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's just wild, man. Like, like if I just told you, if you stopped watching WWE TV and I was like, yeah, man, Rhea Ripley's in a faction with Finn Balor and she's like, lady, but that sounds fucking cool. It's like, no, not cool. <laughs> really far from cool, actually. Bobby Two Shoes, what'd you think? Yeah, I mean, I think their match at the Garden was probably better. Um, definitely better. Um, the no DQ stuff was weird because it was very clear, like a couple minutes in that they weren't going to do any really no disqualification spots and it felt like they were going to lose the crowd. And I think they did lose the crowd for a good portion of it. Um, you know, Dominic is not getting any better, which is alarming, I think, because, you know, you'd like to not have Ray just being a tag team forever. You'd like to, I guess, ultimately run a match between those two, but. He's just not getting there. Um, and then, you know, the edge stuff was fine. It was very funny that they just brought like a platform out for him to come up through. Um, the flames. Yeah. Like, I don't mind edge. It's cool that he's back or whatever. But yeah, this just didn't work for me. So they're going to do, they're going to do Finn, Priest, and Rhea versus Beth, Edge, and Ray, right? Is that the yeah. match? Yeah. That's fine. Uh, shout out to Ben, who's running wild with the gifted subs. Give one to pal Will, too. Shout out. Will, if you can, thank Ben. He's running wild in there, man. Thank you very much, guys. All right. This was, again, I was way off on celebrity matches. Pat McAfee and Happy Corbin was just like, 
like kind of nothing. Yeah. It felt like there was no real ideas for it beyond just like pieces of the McAfee matches we've already seen. I was kind of stunned by how little um, like showbiz was paired with this match and how it just felt like any other match. Maybe I was expecting too much. I really thought this was going to be good fun and it really was totally unremarkable. Um, I actually don't remember anything from it as I'm talking about it Mm -hmm. other than the finish, which looked weird. So, Bobby, am I missing something or is this kind of strange? No, it wasn't great. I, you know, I thought the build was actually pretty good. I thought the pre-match stuff was pretty good. I even kind of came around on Pat's new theme. Um, and, yeah, the match started. And it was just kind of 10 minutes of nothing. It was bizarre. Like, I thought they were going to do, like, a full kind of, you know, like, sports entertainment showcase deal. You mm-hmm. know, like, some shenanigans, some run-ins, some horse shit, some this and that. They just kind of did a wrestling match. The Oracle of Wrestling. What did you think of Pat McAfee versus Happy Corbin? Uh, it was fine. Like the stuff with like Michael Cole, like caught me from like just like everybody popped. Like everybody cheered Michael Cole and like booed Corbin when he like yeah. attacked Michael Cole. Apparently, Cole was very good on this show. Is that true? Incredible, best performance of his career. Mm-hmm. He was. Um, and uh, of course, the post match was funny, where McAfee just like told Corey Graves to fuck off. Um, like the, yeah, the match is kind of boring. It was just there. Um, yeah. I like the finish with the punt to the nuts as, as payback spot. That was good. Um, but it was it was just whatever. Yeah, it was not like again, it wasn't bad. It was just I thought they'd have like a load of ideas and kind of cool set pieces for this, and they just kind of had a match. It was a little strange to me. Um speaking of strange, one one from move from there, admittedly divisive, but you know, ultimately very popular tag title match. The Usos and the Street Profits had Jeff Jarrett, especially as referee, and I was thinking maybe just maybe the match will be too much about Jeff Jarrett and it will kind of hurt the match. And I don't really think that's what happened, but like, like, unless I'm missing something or I like misunderstood what happened here, it appeared that this tag title match opened with just eight minutes of heat. And um, the Oracle of Wrestling, you were in attendance for this pay per view event. And do you have any idea why that was why they started this match? Like, you only have 13 minutes. Why are we starting with a front loaded. Heat segment. Why don't we just do like moves for eight, for thirteen minutes? Do you know what I bitched and griped to my brother Dustin about for the first five minutes of the match? What's that? Exactly what you said. I was like, no shine, no heat, dude. I was yeah. like, there's no shine. Nobody can get in this match. The crowd doesn't care. I was like, immediately Dawkins just gets jumped and like get. And it's like, what the fuck, dude? It, it honestly made me max. I really wanted. I really was kind of after last I month. I was like, it. you know, hey, yeah. this, this might be really good. And like, this was the biggest disappointment of the night, in my opinion. Yeah, like this was a huge disappointment. Jeff Jarrett didn't do anything, like and then yeah. whatever it's Jeff Jarrett, but like like there was no like it just I was like man this is this just wasn't for me and then like they just like did it and then like did like back and forth and they didn't even time their near fall stretch well at all. They just two guys no. did traded kickouts for three or four minutes and then and then they switched places. Which you saying they're like I thought like- it was a I thought it was yeah. borderline bad just because of the structure right. was so bad. Like it was so bad structurally. The The work itself was fine. Although I don't think it was very energized or no, it wasn't, you know, street profits interest was great. And then like yeah. after that, like in the, in the crowd was kind of up for it and they just, they didn't, they didn't. And you know, yeah, you know, Usos definitely deserve some, some, some criticism here too. Like for sure. it just, it was not, it just feels like saying this kind of like, I'm not trying to, defend them here but like this definitely feels like saying there was a choice within the show but there's no way the Usos were like yeah this opened with eight minutes of heat it feels Mm -hmm. to me like they were told this is my read on it it feels to me like this match was not supposed to be particularly loud or impressive and it was supposed to be like something in the middle because I just can't imagine a world in which the Usos have enough strokes like yeah man what we're going to do is we're just going to beat the fuck out of you for eight minutes and then pin you five minutes later I just can't imagine that being their thing. That feels like something that's come directly from the top and is like, we're going to do something different with this match. Again, I could be completely wrong. I don't know. Just I've watched a lot of the Usos, and I know they're not perfect, but this was ridiculous. I mean, I've never seen them open a match like this. This was outrageous. No, was I mean, the last match, they had a long heat signal. They did a shine at the start of it, you know? Mm. It was bizarre. But what did you think of the tag title match, pal? Yeah, I didn't like it very much. You know, the match of Money in the Bank was a lot better. Um, Street Profits came out with a big entrance. I'm like, well, you know, you should have him win. 
I actually thought they would have him win. Yeah, um, me too. You know, uh, Jeff Jarrett didn't really get involved. I just, and that's <laughs> fine. I was just convinced he was going to hit someone with a guitar, and then he didn't. Did he do that last night? I didn't watch. Yeah, he hit lethal because. Oh, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> like you know, lethal was holding Rick, mm-hmm. and Andrade came in and pulled Rick, and then he hit lethal, and like oh, okay. when he pulled Rick, it looked like Rick. Uh. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if Rick knew what was going on after that. He yeah. just got pulled to the ground. And I think Andrade may have forgot that he's 74 and you can't just pull guys around like they're <laughs> fucking... Andrade may have done the most damage to Rick last night, which is a really incredible piece of art that we could explore in many different ways that we're not going to here, but, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. It's just, like, it felt like the right time for the Usos to lose the titles because I don't know who they're going to lose them to now. I know they're building the Viking Raiders back up, but there's such a long way to go with that. And people have said, you know, Owens and Zane, but... They're not on the same show at the moment, which doesn't matter necessarily, but I don't know that either one is 100% healthy. I know yeah. Sammy doesn't appear to be, but like, oh, Kevin Owens hasn't been around much lately either. So it just, it gave me the sense, to be totally honest with you, considering that Jeff was there and the way they wrestled the match, I got the sense that this got changed in a pretty big way late. And I could be totally wrong. I have no scoop here. I just got the sense watching it that they had a particular idea for what this match was going to be. It got changed pretty dramatically, and what we got was a really kind of uninspired replacement of that. Um, again, I could be way off, but they did not wrestle this match with any zip whatsoever. And it was no. even the finishing stretch was very much wrestled in a kind of paint by numbers way. I didn't think the match was bad, Oracle. I think you were, you know, you were in the building, so you were probably more frustrated with its limitations. Right. To me, though. It was bad by relative to its expectations where yeah. last month, at very least, it was a good professional wrestling. I thought it was very good, mm-hmm. you know. So um, disappointing, a shame. The, uh, you know, the uh, finish was very flat. It appears Tez is going to be a heel. Would you agree, Bob? Is that the read? Montez is going to be a heel moving forward? Yeah, I think so. And I don't really agree with splitting them up either. I don't really, like, I, I get, you know, wanting Montez to have a big singles push, but you could still do that and keep him in the tag team. I think this is very possible. Colby or Brawl, I think DIY are very, very possible to be okay. going yeah. place tag belt at some point. We shall see. All right, let's get to it. Uh, Bobby and I did a pretty extensive segment about this oracle already. Last week, I was confused why they booked Liv and Ronda. <laughs> um, I laid out some issues with why you don't do this match. And I think even with the heel turn in execution, you saw what those issues were. What a strange piece of business this was, huh? Easily the worst match of the night. Yeah, um, my it was terrible. Like it was not good. Yep. Um, and I don't even like. I. I do blame Ronda more. Um, because I just don't. Like, I I think if she was wrestling and like, look, Liv is clearly like the last year. She's she's clearly fine. Like, there's, yeah. I have no problem with Liv, but she's not the best person to go out there and try to like, you know. Ronda has been really weird in the second run because there are times where I think she's looked pretty good. Never great, but pretty good. There are times where she just looked really bad. Saturday was one of those nights where I thought she looked pretty bad. Um, the finish was like totally bizarre. I think it was just to set up to turn Ronda heel. Um, because I think we're gonna get Becky Ronda at Mania next year. For sure. Yeah. And this is like this is like the setup to like get, you know, the very beginning of that direction. So like I don't know. The match sucked. Like, I'm glad Liv still the champ. I know it was controversial. The tap at the three count or whatever. I didn't even know she tapped because I, I was just so like. See, I don't know if you know this, but on so when they replayed it, mm-hmm. they like stressed that Ronda was right. I don't know if you're aware of this. Okay. Like it wasn't a tap and a pin at the same time. Like Liv clearly tapped first, and Cole was like, "Well, she should have won." <laughs> it was really so fucking like, weird. They're, dude, gonna, I mean, they're not going to strip Liv of the title. No, I just think it was like a really weird. Maybe Liv was supposed to tap at the same time. Yeah. But, like, the announcers just basically adjusted. Was like, yeah, she's right. She got screwed. <laughs> well, I think the thing, too, about having Ronda beat up the ref is she's, you know, suspended now. So she's gone for however long they want to do that for. So that's, that's a good wrinkle to it, I guess. But SmackDown is nuts. The suspended Ronda is going to be the queen's got to come back on Friday, right? She's got to be Charlotte on Friday. Oh, I think so. God. I have to say, too, so firstly, I have no critique of either woman because I think the match – being booked is fucking insane. I can't believe they booked this match. And that's my take all along in hindsight. You know what I think of Ronda, so I don't even need to go over it. But I will say you're going to need to help live a little bit because she's like, she already feels like 
you know, like the kid wearing the, the replica belt. And that is absolutely the worst thing you can be. It's like, it was great when she won it, but she immediately with this match felt like, like she was like a charity case. And that's not what you want, right? The way they were talking yeah. about her, bro, like she lasted two minutes. It was like two minutes in the match and Cole was like, she's she's got spirit, you know? She's fighting in there. It's like, bro, she's the champ. I yeah. make her out to just feel like a loser, you know? Yeah, that's the same thing that they did with Rey Mysterio, you know? Yeah, man. He's up there and then he loses like every match that he has. Yeah, exactly. Like, you just you could already tell the vibe, and I think it's affecting. I don't know what the reaction was around you, but on TV it sounded like they cheered when Ronda turned heel. That's why it came on TV. Yeah, I don't people, know if it was that way around. For Ronda when she like yeah. beat up the ref and stuff. Because why would they cheer Liv? She got the shit kicked out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. It was weird. They should have never booked the match. They should have put someone else in it to make it triple threat. I'm even going to go as far as say yes, even if it was Natty. Anything to make yeah. it a match. This was never made sense. So no, this was it was bad. It was the worst thing on the show. It was, and it's worth saying. Uh, look, anyone that's watched our reviews of WWE this year, we've we've praised a lot of their pay per views. Watching this review, doing this review, it's clear why we're all in the same point conclusion wise. Where it's like I'm kind of befuddled by how much people love this show, giving it a ten out of ten and stuff. Like we've regularly said, we don't get it about yeah. a bunch of things on here. Like this, because let me tell you, this this was a rough. This was like a rough 80 minutes or so here. Mm -hmm. It was a rough stretch. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and that's not like... This is important. That When I say that, I'm not making that as an indictment of Triple H's regime. No, no. He was writing the end to murder mysteries that, he, that you know, <laughs> he didn't know the killer in, you know? like oh, yeah, we, we, we should... I, I, I guess we should point out Seth uh, Riddle coming out and then Rollins coming out and just doing the same thing to him that he did on Monday. Respect which it. made no sense. I, no, I think but, what happened was, oh, Bobby was going to defend. Go on, Bob. I mean, I don't, I don't like how they did. I just like that they had promos and segments and stuff on pay per view overall. Okay. You know, they had the Drew stuff, which even that was whatever. He's just working the crowd for whatever reason, but it good was entertaining promo. enough. Yeah, it was a good promo. I, I think. Um, By the way, McIntyre is very mixed in the crowd. There are people that love him. There people that hate him. I know the guy who charged um, around with a fucking sword. Like. <laughs> The, the the vibe that I got is the women love him. Yeah, he's very yeah. handsome. Yeah, good looking guy. A lot of the men cannot stand him. Well, he's a little, I mean, he's, you know, he's like an 80s WWF baby face, right? Yeah, he's yeah. what he is. Yeah. Great wrestler, but the character's oh, yeah. very kind of yeah, it's, phony. It's very, yeah, it's it's very hokey. Um, the Rollins Riddle stuff was actually got a great crowd reaction, and then like, everybody's yeah. waiting for like somebody to come out and then like, no one did. and then like no one did and everybody was like why'd they do that so i think what happened was i think in the original format brock and roman was way shorter mm -hmm. and then when that when they like added to that and realized brock was out happy to play ball and kind of go for it everything else got affected as a result the middle of this show felt really unprepared i thought yeah honestly. it was messy um which again look a lot has changed so i get it all right we just mentioned it Broken Realm, we actually got a chance to talk about this a little bit earlier. Uh, before we do it, Bob, any feels on Liv and Ronda? Or you no, we're good. All right, mate. So, Oracle, we talked a little about this earlier, the main event. They went nearly 23 minutes. Best way to describe it was a spectacle. Mm -hmm. It was the wrestling equivalent of, like, an action flick, you know? It was good shit, man. Broken Roman. I'm not saying it was a Mac Classic or anything or high art, but I thought it was a really good time. What you think the main event? Yeah, uh, I really liked uh, the entrance was great. Like, with, because like I said, you know, everybody saw everybody saw the tractor. Everybody's like, "Oh my god, Brock's gonna come out in that!" Everybody kind of figured, and then like he didn't at first. We were like, "Why? Why is he not coming out in it?" And he got in there and drove down there, and you know, the crowd loved it. And he was the most over consistently throughout the whole night. Brock was by yeah. far the most over guy. Like, um, I mean, like Bailey had the biggest pop on yeah. on her return, but like Brock was the most consistently over. And I can see Bobby trying to hide a smile there. Um. But you know, <laughs> he was he was the most consistently over guy. Uh, of course, you know my brother and I were holding up the one for you know. But respect, he, right? Respect, right? 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 You know, we we had to acknowledge our our tribal chief. But um, uh, the part where he like does the com the, the part where he does the. The, you know, Brock introduced himself. I didn't notice till later that Roman caught the mic when he threw it at him. Yeah. It's like perfectly. Um, of course, Brock diving on him right up, like right at the bell was awesome. Um, Shoot Fizz Press, brother. Yeah. Like, yeah, like that ruled. Um, I thought the first half was actually kind of slow. Like, yeah. I didn't love the first half of the match. Uh, things really picked up when Brock started to like 
play with the toys, like the forklift <laughs> on the ring, and like you know the interference and stuff, and the theory coming out and just getting his ass work was hilarious. My favorite part was when Roman just decided to hit him with a briefcase too. Pulled me. <laughs> he was like desperately trying to take out Brock as he hit him. Um. Honestly, like, I, I never noticed it for years, but like the ref were never, the refs were never consistent with the ten counts. Mm-hmm. It, it was driving me a little bit crazy, and like they they did a decent job of Roman like surviving everything, and then of course it took, uh, you know, it took practically a shotgun blast to take out Brock. <laughs> uh, another thing is is they're not consistent with the rules. I'm being petty here. I'm sorry. No, I agree with this. Yes, I agree with this. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a very entertaining match. The forklift stuff we brought, we mentioned right when I came on was incredible. Like an absolute spectacle to watch. Total blast. Glad I was there for it. But when they were throwing everything on Brock, that's and the ref was legal. still counting. I was like, no, yeah. that's no. not how it I worked. think. The idea I think was because when this was happening, Cole began to scream, "Please count faster!" Which put me huge. I think the idea was the ref was just like, "We need this to end." You know, I can't restart yeah. the count. It's just get Brock. Brock's going to keep getting up, man. Like, we're going to be here all night. I think that was the idea. You're ab- I thought the exact same thing you did. It was horse shit the way they did that. Yeah. But um, I loved Roman's facials during that whole thing. I'm like, what do I have to do to this fucking guy? The post, you know? match, the post match was incredible, too. Or, like, <laughs> they all, like, got up. <laughs> and, like, Heyman was like, He's like a mob movie. And they look like and they look like they just climbed out of the trenches of World War One. Bro, when Paulie got up and he was like this, and they put him in like Roman's arms and he like collapsed. Like he'd taken a bullet or something. It was incredible. He's so ridiculous in this role. Like he's great, but he's so absurd. He's never been more ridiculous than he is now. <laughs> At one point he went over to Brock and he was like giving him the belt. He's like, take it. Just leave my tribal chief alone. <laughs> <laughs> It's fucking amazing. Um, <laughs> Stupid. But it really is. It's entertaining at the same time. It but is. It's I, just I, I'm a little bit like we left right after the right after the final fireworks. Yeah. Like right after, basically right after the peacock feed ended, and um, so we missed Brock climbing into the ring and saluting with the hat. But I saw the video of it. I didn't know he'd be. I mean, that looked really. I assume that would be like really dangerous getting back in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It probably was, right? I asked Bob this and he co signed. So I want to get your read on this oracle because you're pretty good at spotting these things like this. Bob, won, uh, Bob, no, you wouldn't wrestle. Brock 100% got blown up in this deal, right? Like very early oh, on. Sure. He looked fucking exhausted, <laughs> right? I was the, yeah. the only things I was thinking about when I was watching the match was number one, what does Oracle think of the tractor? And number two, I was just thinking, Am I being worked by one of the best, you know, salesmen in the history of the business, or is Brock as tired as he looks? Because there was a couple of times where Brock like stood up and was like, "Man, twenty minutes resting, this is crazy." Like he looked fucking like he was feeling it. God bless people, him. He people got to remember Brock's forty five years old. You know, That's he's not he's he he not yeah. chicken anymore. I mean, I said it to Bob. I was like, "We take it for granted." It. Yeah, we take it for granted. Like he's, yeah. you know, and obviously he doesn't wrestle long matches anymore. So, do you think this is his swan song, Bob? Where you're at? Is this the end of Brock? I thought it was, but I mean, he's on the day one poster now, which I mean, that could still change the events, not for five more months or whatever, but. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, maybe he'll come back, do like a Mania season program from now on, maybe like a SummerSlam, maybe just be those two again. Um, But yeah. I think you got to make it work somehow, man. I mean, I I think Oracle and I have had our frustrations. I think a lot of that is the usage and the fact that he's always the world champion or feuding with the world title. I think you can make it work. He's just. He's such a unique commodity, is Brock. You know, mm-hmm. I don't. I think it would take real balls to be like, yeah, we're not interested. I just think it would, uh, but we'll see. Uh, Bob, anything else on the main event? I know we kind of talked generally about it. anything else on the on that front. No, I don't think so. Like I said, I really liked it. I think they, uh, it, it hopefully is their last match, and I think they did a good job with it. Yeah, hopefully so. I think it will be actually. I'm yeah. for once I'm pretty confident on that front, just based on the way things have changed. Um, well, there you go, folks. That was SummerSlam. Um, an interesting show. I thought it was a really fun show. I thought we had a nice kind of tone and sense of optimism. Everyone was working really hard for the most part. There was a couple of elements we talked about earlier. Mm. Um, however, I do think even in just reviewing this, Bob, we've kind of circled back to our opening statement here, which is like, it feels like people got a bit carried away. 
I wonder if how many of those people haven't watched their pay per views this year and don't realize most of them have been pretty good anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I've always a good show, very good even. Just I'm kind of blown away by the great talk. But what do you think, Bobby, overall? Yeah, I'm kind of in the same place. Like, I don't know that it was a top three pay per view of the year uh, from them, but like, the beginning and end were very good and i do get people you know wanting to be excited and wanting to overhype it a little bit because you know for the first time in any of our lives we uh don't have the same person in control and things are at least going to be different and it's been you know particularly bad the past few years and you know it's it's uh, good to have optimism about things sometimes let me be very clear i'm not here to pour cold water over you know the general optimism i am bullish on the changes that are ahead. And mm. I have been pretty consistent in saying that while I don't think he's a creative genius by any means, I think it's almost unfathomable how much better things can be than they have been. Yeah. Um, and I think that will be the case. So to be very clear, this is not a general statement on WWE moving forward. I'm actually excited to watch and cover it all. I just thought this pay-per-view people were maybe a little bit <laughs> excessive it was a good time, though. I don't want to lose sight of that, right? I mean, yeah, I had a lot of fun watching it. I mean, it was, it was exactly. a blast. Uh, yeah. And it was a long run time that felt pretty swift for me. I, I didn't think it dragged mm-hmm. particularly. The Oracle Wrestling, you're in the building. Any final thoughts, your conclusion, so to speak, on the SummerSlam? Uh, it was a very fun show. I'm glad I went. It was cheap. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I only spent a couple hundred bucks total with a parking spot and, and decent seats in the club level. Nice. Um, that place was not sold out. Uh, people saw the video that I sent. It was not um, the entire half the state. There was not 48,000 people in that. There might have been 40. There, there, there might have been right at 40, 41, 42, maybe. But it was it was not. It was the lowest selling stadium show they've probably ever done. Um, I think it was just timing issues where I think it was just wasn't great timing. I also don't think WWE sells very well in the South that much. Yeah, well. Um, I don't Many think they sold that. that well in the South in probably twenty in probably close to twenty years. Yeah, since um, those there, fuckers there are multiple down. reasons for that, but <laughs> yeah. um, it's just it's not, you know. Um, people underestimate even twenty years now, you know, even twenty plus years later, that WCW going out of business hurt the South. In, in it's never the same. Wrestling. It's it's never it's never going to be the same. Like, I don't think people are quite understand the that like i've been to shows in like atlanta and they're like going to see wcw like years afterwards they don't know anything, oh, you know and like and these, these are people who don't these people who don't watch wrestling at all mind why you. don't we bring it back these are people who work you know like you know atlanta public transportation and stuff when i went to wrestlemania in 20 in 2011 they're like going to wcw i was like no they're, they're not even uh, wwe and they're like oh okay. holy shit wow. yeah that's made me sad. Yeah. We should bring it back. Yeah. Power is back. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird, bro. I, and like, T-Grom's right. They sold the available tickets, but that, they were only that many available because <laughs> that's where they capped out. Like, yeah, they didn't book the stadium. I'd imagine they didn't expect the one half of it to not have people there, would be my guess. But right. still, look, it's fucking 40,000 people. That's a oh, good yeah, house. It was, it was a mean, but, crowd. And the crowd was great for most of the night. Crowd, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't even blame the crowd for the middle portion of the show. That was just a weak, no. you know, weak, weak part of the show. Um, it just, uh, you know, I kind of wonder if they'll, you know, I, I think they'll run Atlanta Stadium. You know, I'm, I'm sure they'll run the New Georgia Dome at some point eventually. Yeah. Maybe. Prob- I feel like probably for a summer Sam in the next three or four years. But I don't, I don't see them running. Day one did really good for them. Remember they did that in Atlanta yeah. and it was like mm-hmm. they packed yeah. the arena. Yeah, Atlanta. You know, Atlanta's Atlanta's a big, you know, media town in general yeah. and popular sure. destination. I mean, um, and so is Nashville. To be fair, but like, I just, it's just not the South is hard to, the South's a hard place to draw in wrestling. You have to have a certain sort of. Um, Do you think it hurt the heat? The like the empty space because like. A stadium is really hard to create sound the way you want, right? Because it just escaped. I do think it probably did a little bit. Yeah, I mean the whole. Thing I got was that sense. Off. You saw that video. I said the whole thing was yeah. parked off, man. Like entire side. I have to say, listen, their production. People can tell you one about the carts, and I agree with them. They did a fabulous job shooting around that emptiness, 
Because if you watch it yeah. on TV, it was just a sold-out stadium. There was like a couple shots they got where they exposed it and they cut immediately. They yeah. are masterful at that shit, dude. Like, yeah, it was crazy how well they – because I knew, obviously, I'd talked to you about the night before. And uh, I even saw wrestle ticks through that. So when I was watching the show, I was like, man, you wouldn't even know for the most part. It was like very the few shots. Great. How did the entrance look on TV? I thought it looked really good from – I love that style. I do too. Yeah. I'd imagine for some it's too minimalist, if that makes any sense. Where it's just I loved it, Bob. What do you think of the entrance and such? Yeah, that was really cool. And I thought the first like hour or so in general when the sun was still out was a really cool look too. I forgot how cool it looks to have, you know, mm-hmm. wrestling outside in the afternoon. Yeah. You're a big theme park guy. You want wrestling to be you know, you, you just want wrestling out in the sun really at any cost, don't you? So exactly. One thing Bob's been consistent on this platform, he's he's here to die. Flags of our SummerSlam. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> also, yeah. there's one more thing about the attendance. Apparently they got a whole bunch of walk ups. Don't surprise they me. They did. They did because when I was when I was when we because my brother and I got to the parking lot super early and like there were a bunch of people at the at at the uh, uh, deal. You know the ticket. It's good shit. I mean, I think there was a, I think there was an optimism in the air come Saturday. Mm-hmm. I think people were like, "This is going to be a good time." I think they knew that if nothing else, I don't think Triple Paul wanted to foul in his first pay per view, and they were going to try to make it work. There was nothing, you know. I mean, the the big. Mm-hmm. Angle with the women was the cool deal and was kind of an example of that. But it was a good show, man. I genuinely I, I thought it was a good time. Again, I think I want to stress when we talk about the show not being great to us, that isn't indicative of what's ahead for there to be. It's just more just a response to this particular show. All right, Bobby, any plugs, promotions, so on and so forth as we, uh, we take on? No, I don't think so. Fed Dead's back tomorrow, so watch that. We'll talk about yes. Raw, which will hopefully be good and kind of get into some bigger picture stuff. We will. I believe that piece of shit from Wrestle Purist, Monty, may even be on Fed Dead. Uh, he's very excited. He wants to talk about WWE with Bobby. Um, you know, we do not, obviously, be, to be clear, he's a rival of ours because he's in wrestling media. And as Bob has said many times on Twitter, he does not fuck with wrestling media, right, Bob? That's right. There you go. Um, Oracle, at some point when you have a meeting, you, I, and the contrarian Alex about Bob's place in the Grin Grappler and his behavior today, which I thought was repulsive. <laughs> but this isn't the time. Oracle, any final thoughts, plugs, promotions, so on and so forth? Um, I don't think I'll be able to be on Fed Dead tomorrow, which is unfortunate. I've got a busy two weeks ahead. I will be mm-hmm. on the new and improved <laughs> flagship at 9 p.m. Eastern, though, on Thursday night. Yeah, get fucked um, Impact Wrestling. <laughs> yeah, who cares? Um. <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to it to be quite honest with you. And we're going and we're going to three hours, right? Instead of four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that rules. Um I, I think it's the right move, you know. Me too, Bob. It's good. I'm excited. I'm I'm very excited for that. And also we don't need to like there's no reason for us to wait up for Rampage. It's ridiculous, you know. No. No. I bless Anna J, but I don't need I don't need to wait up for a TV show that's main event is Anna J wrestling, doing mean girl shtick, you know. I don't need to I don't know. See the viewership for Rampage? Ooh, 3.30, yeah. brother. Things are changing, bro. See, Impact's going to be on their towel soon. It's crazy. Uh, I'm just kidding. Don't comment about the Rampage rating. I don't care. It's a joke. <laughs> so anyway, Rampage is a fine show, by the way. It's just staying up until 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. so I can review Rampage on a four-hour podcast is not sustainable anymore. I ain't doing it. So uh, anyway. I'm glad you mentioned that Oracle because you can get a chance to talk about it on Friday, right? The many in the chat were saying, what's the Oracle of Wrestling's response to this? And then, so then I did this. They asked and I did this in response to them. I think I did this. Pop. There it is. Pop. <laughs> there it is. It loops. I always forget it loops. All right, folks. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, latenightgrin.com. Just $1 gets you in. It's a new month. Give us a try for the month. $1 gets you access to everything. The bird is back. Um, probably going to do the raw, some raw coverage, not too much. I want to do Fed Dead. And then in the evening, as Bobby mentioned, probably with Monty too, we're going to talk WWE in a kind of broad strokes way, see what happens on raw. I sense there's going to be some eventful stuff for us to cover. We may even get uh, Oracle to send us his take via DMs. So we can share it like it's like a, a news broadcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so much to discuss, much to look forward to. Uh, there are grins ahead this month. At one point, Bob's going to watch The Big Lebowski on a live stream, and the stream's just going to be Bob watching the film while Shoot and I talk. Or if you can join us for that if you'd like. Um, so that's what's going to happen at some point. Uh, World Class Fridays is back. And by back, I mean he's resurrected from Twitter and is now on the Late Night Grin in a couple of weeks. So many things ahead involving much wrestling you may or may not like. 
you get what you get, I suppose. <laughs> um, I hope everyone has enjoyed this. If you have, when you're on the YouTubes watching the replay, um, then please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, so on and so forth. And again, latenightgrin.com, just $1 gets you access to the audio for this and all the for everything else, the Burt, Late Night Grin, everything. $1, latenightgrin.com. All right. On behalf of Bobby Two Shoes, the Oracle of Wrestling, myself, enjoy this outro. All how.